So yeah, this morning, uh, this is the second last episode for 2022. And uh, today I want to talk about sort of when we do anything, when we give anything, how can we do that so that it has impact, but also longevity. And I've got some interesting things I want to show you today. I want to share with you and uh, an exciting episode ahead. But before we can do that, we obviously have to start off properly. So uh, let's cue the intro. Good morning, good morning, good morning. A warm, warm welcome to another Friday, another show, all the way from Bloberg in uh, Cape Town or in the Cape or the Western Cape. I don't know how to say this properly, but uh, this is where, where I am. I always endeavored, like over the last three seasons, that I want to do a live stream with an amazing backdrop where everybody was just sitting there, mouths open. And then, like this morning, I get up, it's raining. Somebody erased the mountain. There's no more mountain because you can't see it. So it's just an amazing, like, it never works out. So anyway, you've got this backdrop and you've got me. So uh, looking forward to today's show. We've got uh, Lilani in the house this morning to do the news for the second last time this year. And uh, Norma is also back uh, talking about reinventing yourself version 2.0. So looking forward to that one. I've got a few announcements and then I'm going to get obviously into today's topic. Uh, but before I do all of this amazing stuff, let me say a warm good morning. Uh, good morning, Quibus. Uh, awesome to see you. And uh, working from home this this week. Uh, fantastic. And uh, Terence, good morning. Nice to see you. Uh, you've been keeping me busy uh, with some lack of conversations in between and jokes and all sorts of stuff. Nikki, good morning. Nice to see you. Uh, Albertus, good morning. Albert. Hope it's going well. Jonita, uh, good So, it's very nice to see you in the next week. Gary, good morning. Nice and hot in Pretoria. Yeah, it's cold and raining. Uh, it's very depressing, actually. <laughs> I said this morning, like, I could just sit down and just watch Netflix all day with this weather. But, yeah, Mark, good morning. Good morning. Always keeping me on my toes. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Gloria, good morning. Nice to see you. Welcome. Over on LinkedIn, we've got Halloween. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we've got Barry. Good morning. Uh, Mark Bullock, good morning. Nice to see you. Karina, good morning. Awesome stuff. I hope you are doing amazingly well. Uh, this Kovas saying, where is the view, Francho? Exactly. There is no view, Kovas. It's grey. <laughs> if you think grey is a view, I can show you. Uh, Rihanna, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Uh, Heinrich, good morning from Northwest University in Poch. Welcome, welcome. All the way over on LinkedIn. I don't know which is further, Poch or LinkedIn, but uh, welcome. We've got Francis. Good morning. Nice to see you, Mr. Mark Lane. I hope you're doing well down in Melbourne, uh, that everything is lacquer. Johan, good morning. Uh, nice to see you as well. Tracy, good morning. Uh, Johan is going second time. Hello, Omal. And then good morning, Mel, also over on LinkedIn. Right, ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining us for this session live. I look forward to sharing some thoughts and ideas and uh, insights and things with you this morning. But before we do, let's listen to the latest news with Lilani from the Financial Planning Institute of Southern Africa for the second last time in 2022. Goeiemorgen, Fransjo and everybody online. Fransjo, with you and Blauberg there in the Western Cape, I've got a special song dedicated to you, which is Goeiemorgen, my sonskyn, Goeiemorgen, my kind. Now, that's uh, one of my favorite songs. It's Larika Rauch. And every time when I'm in Blauberg, I actually listen to that song on full volume um, because it's such a special place. And even with it being cloudy and rainy, it still is a beautiful place. And if I can ask you a favor, if you could go and have an ice cold beer this afternoon at uh, Blue Peter. I nearly said hello, Peter, but Blue Peter is one of my favorite places. All right, so uh, hot off the press, maybe not so hot. If you don't know, you should know. Um, our very own um, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa is in a little bit of hot water, as you know, um, but he's considering quitting after an advisory panel found that the cash in so far scandal may be grounds for his impeachment. Now, this panel is led by none other than the former Chief Justice, um, who found the President may have violated sections of the Constitution following the theft of the 580,000 American dollars stashed in a sofa at his game farm. 
So if you heard about uh, the thing that's going on, cash in the sofa, that's where it's coming from. It's that 580,000 American dollars stashed in the sofa at his game farm, and that was actually stolen. Now, the effect of this on investors. So let's talk a little bit about that. So the effect of this on the investors, uh, whilst they are waiting answers to figure what's going on, they are selling South African assets. They're selling them off, yes, fearing that um, Ramaphosa's departure may actually set back some of the reforms aimed at bolstering economic growth and establishing public finances. Now, I'm sure you've been watching the Rand dollar exchange that's been going up and down, up and down uh, because of this. But uh, I did quickly have a look. I did see that Lekker FM and Batuaria said um, that uh, Ramaphosa is not too stressed at this point in time. And he's not um, bowing down to the pressure at this point in time. So he had not quit yet. Um, he's still the South African president. No news on that. Then a little bit about Alan Gray. Let's talk about Alan Gray. So Alan Gray says no to a plea uh, from the activist group Fossil Free South Africa or FFSA for a fossil uh, fuel free investment fund. So let's just understand a little bit why is Alan Gray saying no to the plea for a fossil fuel free investment uh, fund. So their chief investment officer said that the establishment of the fossil free fund was not the answer. He is of the view that the climate change is one of the biggest threats that faces society today. He therefore believes that the best approach is to use the active investment strategy to tackle climate change um, um, issues that we have. And in the full article, if you want to read more about that, is actually on MoneyWeb. You would uh, remember that David LePage was actually at the FBI convention this year talking about exactly this topic, Fossil Free SA. Then um, I've been tracking a phase ombudsman case for years. Um, and there's a, it's the case none other than Leonie Lantman. She has since um, fallen in love again, and she's Leonie LaRue now. But the ombudsman case is still Leonie Lantman. So this case is being owned going on for more than a decade. You know, it started in about February 2012, if I recall correctly. And this is where financial advisor took Leone's investment from Momentum and replaced it with a ShareMax investment. So like I said, there's a very big history to this. And there's a lot of expert opinions on this case. If you want to go and have a look, if I do recall, I think our very own Anton Swanepoel also provide an opinion on this case. The bottom line with this case is that the ombud did not consider all the responses received. And there's quite a few of disputes of facts on record. Now we know that the moment that there's a dispute of fact that one of the cases the ombud actually can't investigate because they, they, they don't work in the way like a physical court work where everybody comes in, there's witnesses, you present um, you know, evidence it's all paper trail based. Um, that's the arbitration route that they take. But there's a lot of uh, disputes of facts on record, which the ombud can't ignore. And the financial, the financial advisor did provide his response, actually. And this is why the tribunal now send it back again. Now, I don't know if you can recall, the appeal board looked at this case in 2018, send it back. And another tribunal looked at it in 2019, send it back. Um, and now in 2022, almost 12, late, uh, 12 years later, the tribunal is uh, setting the determination aside to say to the ombud, you have to look at the disputes of facts on record, et cetera, et cetera. So it would be very interesting to see how the new phase ombudsman advocate, Jumps, John Simpson, will actually deal with this matter. I really look forward to see how advocate John is going to handle this case. Then uh, regulatory examinations. For those who did not write the RA exams yet, or if you know anyone, I think most of the people online have written the RA exams, but if you know of anybody um, in your financial planning practice or at your FSP who still need to write their RE exams, the FECA has actually updated their preparation guidelines. So they do update them from time to time. So the latest update is as at 29 November. And you can find that on the FECA's website under regulatory entities. Now, it's somebody, sometimes a bit of a challenge to find something on the FECA's website. Just go to regulatory um, entities and you'll find RE1, RE3, RE4, and RE5 preparation guidelines updated. Now, just very quickly, don't uh, forget the response to the declaration of crypto assets as a financial product actually came out, that declaration. And the FECA was looking or is looking for feedback with regards to the exemptions that they want to pl uh, put in place for board notice 194, which is the fit and proper requirement. Now, responses were due the 1st of December, which was yesterday. Um, but I, I know that the FSA is very open-minded if you approach them because you've maybe missed a deadline or you're maybe still busy. 
just look at the email address in that document and just ask if you could maybe have extension till Monday or Tuesday. It's very important that we comment into these documents. Then just very quickly what's happening at the FBI. If you've not seen it, on the 8th of December from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock, we will have a live webinar from none other than Jason Bernick, who will talk about that first meeting. Now, it's not your first date, but it's that first meeting with your client. So topics that he will cover is what to do, what to say, who to be, human connection, meaningful conversation, and, and the hook and how to reel in. Um, and this is complementary specifically to FBI professional members. So how do you register for this event? Well, the way you normally do it, go to the FBI's website and click on events to register for this live webinar. <clears throat> if you register and you miss it, the recording will be available. Then don't forget about the annual refresher next year. Registrations are open. We are going to have great speakers, Vessel Oosthuizen and Errol Mayer. I always love to see how Vessel and Errol actually tackle topics head on and how they actually debate. It's wonderful to have Vessel and Errol this year again. We have Palisa Duby, the current financial planner of the year. David Kopp, he's left FBI, but he did not left the profession. So David Kopp would be with us and I will give an update on ombudsman cases like I normally do. It's not just a great opportunity to catch up with your masterclasses, topics that you should know, um, but it's also a fantastic opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer review. Uh, membership renewal, please remember it's open. Uh, renew before 15 December 2022 and pay your membership fee to qualify um, for the fees as of this year. So you'll then miss the inflation link increase that you will see next year. Then just quickly, something lost from my site, um, Francois. What happened this day? Um, if you know who Duran Duran is, uh, you're cool and you know your music. I don't want to say that you're old. I just want to say you're cool and you know your music. If you know who Duran Duran is, on this day in 2016, Dur Duran Duran said that they were outraged and saddened at losing a high court fight to reclaim U.S. rights to some of their famous songs. Some of those famous songs were um, Girls on Full, Rio, and A View to Kill. So that's it uh, from me over to you and have a fantastic Friday until I see you next week again. Francia, blessings. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Lilani. Uh, the one thing, you know, like, I don't know, I always enjoy the humor and the fun element and, you know, like even Rion Kreivachen can come and learn from you. I hope he doesn't see this, but uh, <laughs> he could probably come in. And I do know who Duran Duran is. Just, just uh, that's how cool I am. Anyway, so thank you very much for that. Uh, looking forward to last week's last show uh, of the year. Not the last show ever, but the last show for 2022. Uh, but next up, we have Norma and Reinventing Myself version 2.0. Norma, no pressure. Uh, but it, at this point in time, this time of the year, I feel I need some reinvention. So let's hear what you have to share with us. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to bring you this topic today. So how I came about this topic is I was really just thinking about my own life and my own year, and I was just evaluating and also just thinking of next year where I want to go. And I think this is a great exercise to do with goal setting because the goal setting really um, addresses the um, actions that we need to take. And now reinventing ourselves is the mindset part that we need to address it um, in order to get to the goals. So reinventing myself, you know, getting to that next version of me. So it can be version 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, wherever you are on your journey. Um, I, if I look at my own life, I can see that I've had three major shifts um, throughout my life. And I'm guessing within the next year or so, I would, um, you know, moving into that again, next version of myself. So I think these shifts are very necessary and needed because it takes us to that person that we need to be in order to get to our goals. It gets us to the next level. It gets us to like shed that old identity. It's almost like a snake shedding skin you know, shedding that old identity and creating a new identity. And it's needed to 
get to our goals, dreams, and the desires we have. So let's look at three things. Let's look at the what it is, why we do it, and then the how. So let's address the first one, the what. So according to Google, reinvention means that I'm changing something so much uh, that it appears to be entirely new. So I can also take up a radically new way of life. So that's what it is. So I also want to address what it's not. It's not me trying to fix myself or think uh, the way I am now, something is wrong with me. It's not, you know, not feeling good enough or worthy enough. And it's also not thinking that once I get there, my life is going to be amazing without any problems. So that's what reinvention is not. So why then do we do it? So the reason I want to reinvent myself is to see what I'm capable of, to see my capacity, to see my maximum potential. It's also to like manage my mind instead of the other way around, because I know between me and my goals is really just my mind. Because if we look around us, everything that I now see was at one point impossible. And if that person that actually created this thing that now exists thought of, yeah, oh, you know what, I'm going to give up. Um, I'm tired of the failure or the rejection. This thing would have never been here. So that's the reason I want to invent, reinvent myself. I want to grow. I want to evolve. And I want to contribute in a bigger way. So um, I want to expand my mind. I want to become more so I can expand my mind, so I can think in a new way, so that I can serve my clients better at the end of the day. Um, when we think about our goals and dreams and the desires we have, we sometimes think it needs to be realistic, it needs to be reasonable, and it needs to be possible if I look from where I'm coming from. But what if it doesn't need to be any of those things? What if it can be a little bit unrealistic, it can be maybe not reasonable, and maybe it seems in the moment a little bit impossible? Is it possible then to go and create that thing? So let's address the how. So the how is, I think we think to reinvent ourselves seems like such a big job. Um, it thinks we, um, I see it sometimes as, um, or people see it as, as being a little bit impossible or difficult to do. But I think if we go back to basics again, I think it, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty easy to visualize that. I think the difficult part is to stick to what I said I was going to do. So that is the challenging part. So let's just look at a couple of things when I look at the how of reinventing. So the first, first thing that comes to mind is that I want to be bold and audacious enough to set those big goals. Um, I want to set those unrealistic goals. And I want to I, I want to state that to myself like unapologetically. I want to own that. And I want to set those um, or reinvent myself or see that person that I want to become um, because it matters to me. I want to set those goals because it's important. It might not be important to other people around me. I might not always get the support. I might not always get people to agree with what I'm busy doing. But I believe in myself and my dreams um, enough um, to know that, that I can get there. So the, the boldness and the audacity to set those big unrealistic goals sometimes. Then also, before we can change anything, we need to become aware of what the problem is. So if I want to reinvent myself, I want to see where is my current belief and my current thinking that is not going to serve me moving forward. Because if I keep thinking and believing the same things as I've done up until now, I'm going to keep getting the same results into my future. So I have to start thinking and believing different things about myself. The next thing is to create that attitude, that energy that is going to drive me to actually take those actions that I've already set on my goal plan. So what do I want to feel working towards my goals? Do I want to do it feeling stressed, overwhelmed, and anxiety and, and being um, you know, unmotivated throughout this journey? Or do I want to do it from a place of like inspiration or commitment? Then the third thing is maybe look at what, what, what have I got in my life that I, I can take with me? What is working at the moment? And then lastly is to actually just go and do it. Because we can make this big commitment, and it still takes us to make that daily decisions every single day. So I make 365 decisions every day, 
but it also those small little decisions that I make on a daily basis. And that all contributes to me reinventing myself and becoming that person. So that's what I have for you about reinvention. So as I've mentioned, take this exercise and, and do it in, in conjunction with your goal setting process. So that's it for me. Thank you for being here. I'll be back next week. Thank you very much, Norma. Uh, and I think this is going to lead on very nicely into what I want to talk about, doing things with impact and longevity. And uh, I'll give you the backdrop to that in a second. But first, just a couple of announcements. And uh, the first one is that we are, believe it or not, I also can't believe it, but if I look at the registrations we're getting, it's obviously people are still up for this. On the 13th of December, so it's in two weeks' time, uh, roughly a week and a half, uh, on the 13th of December, well, it's almost two weeks, 13th, and 13th of December, Tuesday at 9 o'clock, uh, we're doing a complimentary CPD session. And uh, we teamed up with the guys from Advice Tech, and we're going to do a session on uh, a single point of truth for your practice. So really looking forward to that. And uh, it's been uh, sort of interesting to see what they do and how they do it. And uh, we then had a discussion, and we thought, like, this would be a great way to end off the year and offer a complimentary CPD session, something that we don't do anymore, really. There's only one other session, and that's the budget speech that I do that is complimentary. The rest of it is all only for our members. But really looking forward to this one. Uh, we've had loads of registrations already. We sent out the registrations yesterday, and uh, I will put the, the link isn't down in the description yet, but by the time you watch the recording, it will be down in the, in the description. Or check out your email if you haven't uh, received that. Uh, you can also join the WhatsApp group and uh, you will be able to find it there as well. So uh, do join us for that one. It's going to be an hour. It's going to be a very nice interactive kind of session. There will be opportunities for Q&A. And uh, you'll also be able to see what Advice Tech is all about during the process. So looking forward to that. And uh, we are applying for CPD. So there will be CPD. I can't say how much yet. And uh, I'm confident that there will be. I know Lalani will hit me over the head if I say there will be. Uh, but we're confident that, uh, that it will be approved. But we will announce that in about a week's time exactly how many points that, that would give you. Um, righty. So, so that's the first one. The other one, big one for me, is that on Monday the ticket sales for propulsion tech is going live and we're going live with a super early bird special deal price uh, that is going to be available until the 14th of december so you'll be able to get the super early bird tickets and you're going to fall off your chair you better hold on because the super early bird price is only 225 rand including that right so it includes that 225 rand uh, it's a two-day event live uh, you're going to see live demos and showcases of all sorts of technologies. We're going to have some fantastic keynotes and fantastic panel discussions as well. It, it's happening next year on the 7th and 8th of March. So uh, do jump for those. If you're a Propulsion Pro member, remember your tickets are included in your membership. So you don't have to purchase a ticket. Uh, and uh, we will we will enroll you automatically when the time comes. So don't worry if you're a Propulsion Pro member. And even if you join any time from now, until then, uh, you will still get a ticket. So definitely something uh, to consider. Also, what we've implemented now is a group booking, where if you do group book bookings of 10 or more people, you will get an additional 10% discount. So uh, if you want to book for your whole team, you've got 10 or more people, then you are most welcome. You will note that we've really streamlined the process. Uh, we've cut down on the communications. We've cut down on what you need to put in when you register, it's only the bare, bare minimum stuff. So re whether you're registering a group or one person or anything in between, it's an easy, easy process. So I've been working on that whilst being in Cape Town. I actually wanted this live already, but we're going live on Monday with this. So uh, do look out for those. The full price of the ticket, the standard price, by the way, is 395, 395 Rand. So this is almost half of the cost if you jump and get this before the 14th of December. Alrighty, um, next week I will also announce our sponsors. We have been like so blessed with the sponsors. Uh, like everybody jumped on board with, with this. So I'm really, really excited to announce them to you next week. 
and uh, then there's still space for people who wants to just be exhibitors. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, it doesn't have to be a tech if you want to exhibit, uh, but we'll talk more about that uh, somewhere in the future. All right. So uh, I think those are those uh, that I needed to share this morning. So next up is the featured topic, which is all about doing things with impact and longevity in different areas of your business. So uh, let's get into this conversation. So where does this come from? Uh, this whole notion around doing things with impact and longevity. Now, way back, I can't remember when, if you go look on my YouTube channel, somewhere there's a video that I made about a two and a half minute video where I spoke about giving gifts uh, and what makes a good gift, a good end of year gift at the time is what I called it. And uh, it was quite an interesting thing because I have experienced certain things. I mean, I've been around now for, for a long time uh, as a as, uh, uh, Lilani said, I'm a bit, I'm, I'm cool, I'm not old, but I've been around and I've, I've, I've received many gifts, we've given many gifts, uh, you know, and, and I saw certain things and there's certain principles that I started to form in my mind of what makes a good gift and what not. But I wanted today to take this further. So although I will be talking about that specifically uh, as well as one of the, the, the three areas that I want to talk about, is that how do you bring this into the business? Now, where does impact and longevity come from and how can you define this, right? So impact can be negative or positive. So we're definitely aiming for a positive impact and then we want it to last. We want that impact to last and that's where the longevity comes in. Now, way back when I did the, uh, the, the, the little video and you'll still see <laughs> I didn't have a beard, um, like it, it's a long time ago. So uh, I think I've had a beard since 2015. So it must have been before that, that I made that video. But that video is still as relevant today. It, it, it's, it's one of those evergreen ones. You have to go and watch this. But anyway, so at the time, one of the things that I said is that if you want to, to, to give a gift that really like somebody loves and they value and they, their eyes light up and things like that, that gift should, and I still, I still remember Fonda said, it should hit the heart, but it can't only hit the heart, it should also then stay in the mind. So that's then, I sort of translated that now into, it needs to have an impact and then it needs to have longevity so that people will remember this for a long time and tell others about this. Now, extravagance has got absolutely nothing to do with it. It's not about how extravagant the gift is or whatever it is that you're doing, but the bigger question from that is how do we bring that into our practices and into our businesses uh, on a daily basis so that whatever it is that we do, that there's an impact, a positive impact, and that it lasts, this, it, it's sustained, it has longevity, it will live on and it will get people to tell your story and to share it with, with others. So there's sort of three areas I want to talk about today. Now, there's many others that one can look at, but there's three main ones that I feel where this is extremely important. And if you start off with these, you know, then it is something that will definitely make a big difference. Now, last week, or in this week, it was on Tuesday, not last week, this week, Tuesday, we had a CPD session where I spoke about the seven focus areas for your practice in the next 12 months. And I, I really, I wanted to show this on screen. I even asked the guy if I can, but... Um, I, I decided not to, but I got the best, best feedback ever. So he, the thing in capital said, this was effing fantastic. So, and I did say effing, I didn't say the whole word, but it is just, you know, it's little things like that, that says to me, well, if you take that, the stuff that we discussed there, and you think about how can you do things with impact and longevity? I mean, that is sort of the makings for a, just, just a phenomenal 2023 and beyond. So these are things that you need to start thinking about now and that you need to discuss with your team. And if you don't have a team, you need to sit down with other people that are involved in your business, like maybe your favorite consultant, maybe, uh, you know, just a, a friend or your spouse or somebody that can you can sort of brainstorm with. You can talk to me as well. But just to start thinking about this, for next year and beyond. How can you do things differently? Now, this is why I'm saying what Norma said earlier about reinventing yourself, you know, and it, it, I love that definition. It's like you change things so much that it seems like brand new, but it's not always necessary to do that in your practice, right? So unless you feel like you're on the wrong 
track. You want to get off onto another track. Then reinventing is absolutely critical. If you're not the best version of yourself, reinventing yourself, I think is absolutely critical. But anyway, that's not what my talk is about today. So it is important. So the three areas, because I'm thinking like people are sitting there, you want to write down. So write this down. So there are three main areas where I would start thinking about, does it have impact and does it then have longevity? Does that impact stay around for a long time? The first one is your marketing, right? The one thing that we probably all struggle with or many of us struggle with, I definitely struggle with that. Um, I was yesterday at, a, at an event for Jersey Finance or of Jersey Finance here in Cape Town. And uh, <laughs> there's a lady that walked up to me uh, that I don't know and uh, at all. And she said, like, I see you on LinkedIn. You are all over the place. I want to introduce myself. And it's so amazing. I really love it. And we had a long conversation with a uh, absolutely phenomenal lady. But, you know, it is, it is like because you see me everywhere. Now the question in my mind beckons, like, but, you know, that, does what I do on social media have an impact? You know, or on LinkedIn specifically. I'm not all over social media. But it's... It's just a question that we should ask. Like just being seen is sort of that's level one, but then making a difference and having an impact and 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 that I think that's the next level, or maybe that's even three or four levels up. But that's the important question now because it doesn't help me just being everywhere and people recognize me. But you know, it's almost like I'm annoying them because I'm all over the place. They can't turn left, I'm there, they can't turn right, I'm there. I think that works to a point, but that's not the point what we do want to do is add value uh, so marketing is the first one i want to talk about the second one is our engagement with people uh, our clients uh, different service providers strategic partners etc so engagement and then the last one that i want to talk about is appreciation so those are the three marketing um uh, engagement and appreciation so those are the three things that, that i want to talk about so let's start off with with the marketing part now, if you think about marketing and why that needs to have an impact is because often marketing, yes, you can aim your marketing at your existing client base because maybe you want to unlock more things for your client base and you want to make them aware of more services that you offer to them. So it definitely includes that. But I also think that often it involves people that you don't know yet. It involves people who are not clients yet. It maybe involves people that will never become a client, but that can refer people to you uh, for whatever reason, right? So that's the first one. So we need to think about whenever we do marketing and, and you know what, social media isn't the way to do marketing. It is a great way, but it is not the only way. Having a YouTube channel isn't the only way. Having a newsletter is not the only way. Having a website is not the only way. It is like, depending on what you're doing and what you're comfortable with, you'll be using that. Maybe you exclusively make use of events, for example. Maybe you exclusively make use of the radio or the television to be able to do this. Or maybe uh, you, you rely heavily on word of mouth. That's still marketing. But how do we help people that are referring people to you do it in the right way? So I think there's, there's loads of things that we need to consider from, from that point. The biggest thing, if you want to do marketing that has impact, right? And you want it to have longevity. But the first thing is impact. We first need to have impact. If there's no impact, there's, there can't be any longevity. So the first thing is to add value. And how do we add value from a marketing point of view? Well, I think it's very simple, actually. It is that we need to talk to people at a level where they are. The last thing we want to do is sound clever, to sound like we are, you know, just it, it, we're so far removed in terms of the language we use from the person who needs the advice that they go like, ah, oh, I'm not even going to follow. But if we can come down to their level, and it's not even to say that we are up there and they down here, maybe they up there and we down here, we need to go to their level, right, to be able to talk to them. So, so let me also just say that. But it is how do we connect with them? And uh, Marguerite the other day um, said to me, like uh, something that really stuck with me and like, how do we meet people where they are? It's such a powerful thing to say. And, you know, if you really think about this, how do we do that? How do we use simple language? How do we use simple examples? How do we showcase that we understand the problems and that we actually have solutions to these problems? Um, and that's what we need to do. I've been been listening to, to, to some audiobooks recently as well. And, a lot of it has got to do with content creation. 
because that's obviously something that we do quite significantly or a lot of. And the main idea with this is like, you need to be answering people's questions at the end of the day. And it always feels like, but sure, if I go search on Google, there's so many things there. There's so many like already people out there doing that. But the thing is, and I always say this, right? <laughs> there's people that will go type in your name, transfer it away in Google and see if you pop up on the first page. Absolutely fantastic. But that's easy to achieve. What is not so easy to achieve is when somebody is looking for somebody like you in their area. So now it becomes a much more generic search term, but in a very specific area. And how do you make sure that you, the person that they will find and resonate with and connect with? In other words, like how are you going to have an impact on that person's perception, an impact on that person's life, an impact on that person's mindset and thoughts so that they go, you know what, this is making a difference. I need to be talking to, to Mr. or Mrs. X, uh, whatever it may be. So that for me, from a marketing perspective, is absolutely key. And part of this value add and just, you know, it's not only about showcasing that you understand the problem and that you have a solution. It's also about educating them during the process. So it's about teaching people in a interesting manner. And whether you do that through little short online videos and courses and things, or if it's through articles or in whichever way you do that. But the education part is so that the people feel like I know more than what I did yesterday. And I, I now become more confident as time goes on because I'm learning. And the more they learn, the more they get interested to, to engage with you. So it's a very interesting um, sort of dynamic. Important just from a marketing point of view that if you want to have that impact, you got to make sure that it speaks to them at their level, whatever it is. And then... If you want to have the longevity, that's where the value add comes in. That's where you need to make that impact must make a difference. So, um, so that's from a marketing point of view. So, so very important to just go and think about what are the questions. So just from a practical point of view, what are the questions that you get most often? Write down the top 10 and do something with that. Write an article, make a video, I don't know, create a, a series of posts for social media, create a newsletter for that but answer one question at a time. So don't try and answer multiple questions in one piece of content. Just go and create that. And you'll be amazed. Like This is what I found way back when I started writing articles. It took me so long to write a six-word article. Today, I can probably do it very, very quickly in 20 minutes or maybe less, um, You know, because you just go sit down and you start doing it. You don't overthink this anymore. Once you've got a framework to fill it in and color it in becomes so, so easy. So not only is this going to have an impact on your clients and have longevity with your clients or your prospective clients, it's also going to have an impact on you and your business uh, going forward. So you're going to grow as a, as, a, as a creator. And because we have to, we have to answer people's questions. And where people go first, you know, it's the, it's the internet. Right. So that is it from a, from a marketing point of view. The next part is engagement. <clears throat> and engagement is a, is a very interesting thing. We've spoken about client engagement here on the show quite a few times. And client engagement is really a sub part. And I think I had a conversation with somebody on LinkedIn a few weeks ago that that is really part of the bigger client experience. So the way that we engage is not only about client engagement. Client engagement is one puzzle piece of the overall client experience. So you can already see why this is so important. And, and the reason why I feel it's so important is that it is where people get to experience you. It is where the techie hits the road. It is where there's human-to-human -human connection. It's human-to-human -human conversation, eyeball-to-eyeball. -eyeball. And uh, be it virtual like this or be it in person, doesn't matter. But this is where there is actual real-time engagement most of the time. There's obviously other ways of engagement as well. But when we talk about engagement, what I'm really talking about here is this is where connection happens, right? Anything else we do, all the admin, all the compliance, uh, all the technology, all the amazing stuff doesn't create connection. Engagement creates connection where there's, and, and I like to refer to a meeting of minds, both people participate. So it's not only me speaking, it's you speaking back. So if you think about the comments, if you guys are commenting and you're welcome to comment and sharing, that's engagement. Because I can look at it, I can answer you here, and uh, it becomes it becomes easier. So definitely something that <clears throat> that one wants to 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 consider. Now, connecting means that 
a few different things. Connecting means that we have a conversation, that we look each other, each other in the eye, I gather information, I get to know you a little bit better, you get to know me a little better. We, over time, start to see how we act and react in different situations, depending on what's happening. But ultimately, that connection, all that information that we gather, everything that we get leads to us understanding so for us as financial planners, it is understanding the client, having a deep understanding. And this is the most important thing. I think I said this a few times the last two or three weeks or so. Just I don't know how these conversations come about. But in my view, and you can say whether you agree with me or not, we tend to go out and say, oh, financial planning is unique. And financial planning is, you know, it is every person is different and every person's. I don't believe that anymore. I used to. I used to go like, you know, it has to be customized for every person. No. Financial planning is financial planning. There's a way to invest, invest this. And the only difference would be, oh, for you, I invest here. And for that person, I invest it. But investing is investing. Budgeting is budgeting. Risk cover is risk cover. Healthcare is healthcare. You name it. Like, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. Where the difference actually comes in and where the understanding the person is so critically important is to understand and almost, I would say, in a sense, predict what their behavior is going to be. How are they going to act or react in a certain situation? That is what we need to understand because that is the, the, the thing that is truly unique uh, for each and every single individual. It's not their financial plan. If you think about like this, there's many of these like the value that a financial planner adds, you know, from an investment perspective. I think behavior now makes up more than half of that, you know, whatever that alpha is that you create over and above, like half of it is managing behavior. So that is becoming critically important uh, from, from this point. But I think that sort of proves the point in a sense, depending on, 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 on the research you look at, that if I don't understand my client, if I don't understand the person, the human being that I'm working with, then whatever plan we put in place is probably going to fail somewhere down the line. And somebody did a post uh, in the week as well saying, and it was uh, Alex Armozi, if I, if I remember correctly, I, I think the post said, or it was a little real or something. And he just said, like, the worst thing you can do is to abandon a great plan in hard times. And that is what it's all about. So you want to understand how people is going to behave or what drives them, what motivates them. Why don't they want to do certain things? Why do they want to do certain things? So that is where this becomes important. So for me, from an engagement perspective, if you want to have impact, it is absolutely taking the time to get to know that person, but not only know them, to understand them. And then again, you take it one step further, not only know and understand them, what about their spouse if they have one? What about their children if they have? What about their bigger family dynamics? It was quite interesting. The Jersey finance session yesterday was a lot about family office stuff. I mean, that's way beyond me, right? Like if you look at the amount of money you talk about for family offices and how that's defined, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. But how do we understand all the dynamics that are at play and not only the person in front of us? What about people that are closest to them? Uh, who do they hang out with? Like, who, what are the influences from outside? So there, there's loads of things that we need to understand, I think, from, from, from that point. Now, as soon as we understand, I think the thing where the longevity then comes from, because this has impact, right? If I understand and I can anticipate and I can help manage your behavior in terms of your financial planning uh, or anticipate certain things or know what I should or shouldn't advise you on, then if you want to have longevity, the thing that will naturally form, because I think it's impossible to understand someone deeply and not have empathy. Like I think empathy is going to come naturally once you understand somebody, because now if I understand you, it means I can literally put myself in your shoes. I understand why you think the way you do. I understand why you act. There is a reason that things are it's not any more like oh this person doesn't have self-discipline because that has got nothing to do with it like discipline or, or or money skills or it's got nothing to do with it there's other things that are driving people's behavior so empathy is then the thing that creates the longevity in this relationship because i understand i have a different level of conversation with the person uh, from that point now 
The other thing here is that's very important for me is that you can't just focus on your engagement with clients, right? This goes to your staff, your team. Uh, it goes to the technology that you use, believe it or not, in, in, in my opinion, and obviously you. So those are the three important things. So we need to make sure that whatever we put in place from an engagement point of view filters through your team. And that everybody seeks to get to know and connect with, with the person they're working with, to understand them, to sort of cultivate that empathy uh, for that, and that we deeply understand uh, and, and work on another level with them. And again, going back to the marketing thing, you know, meeting them where they are, talking their language, talking at a level that is easy for them to engage with us, and that, that don't make them feel like, oh, I have no clue what's going on. That's the last thing we want. So that's how you create the longevity part. Um, so, so just Im important. Right. So then the appreciation one. <clears throat> now, appreciation is a big one because often I, I still believe in this, in this day and age, uh, we don't say thank you enough. I think some people look at the posts that I do on LinkedIn or the things that I say on the show or at events, etc. I'm always thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm humbled. I'm I'm so grateful. I'm I'm literally like because it still blows my mind that anybody would listen to me, uh, if you know my whole history and, and where we come from, etc. So it is an absolutely something that I will remain thankful for forever. And I'm going to say it because saying thank you is very important to me, and uh, it's definitely something that I think we don't do enough of. We're so busy chasing after the next thing and the next deal and the next. I mean, the other day I was at a thing and and I left and I was like, did I say thank you for them organizing this? Because it's so in and out and it's, oh, I'm late for the next thing, you know, and we've got to be so conscious of it. So appreciation is a big thing. And in season one, there was a couple of uh, episodes I did on events, the different kinds of events. One of the types of events is an appreciation event, but obviously sort of showing my appreciation and saying thank you can be done in so many different ways. It could be just done by saying thank you. It could be done by giving somebody a gift. It could be done by taking somebody to lunch or doing something special for them or I don't know, you know, whatever it may be. I think there's, there's a billion ways in, in which we can say thank you. Now, where this also comes from, so I was fortunate this week uh, on Monday to uh, spend some time with the guys from Seed Analytics. Now, <laughs> these oaks really went all out. Uh, I think they they really did their homework. And obviously, we've, we've gotten to know each other over the last, uh, I don't know, six, seven years or so. And um, they they definitely, and luckily, we had some things in common as well because we all love coffee. So uh, we did this thing where we, we did a, a barista course uh, at, at, uh, at Origins here in Cape Town. An amazing experience, apart from the fact that I was an hour late uh, because I obviously don't know how to gauge Cape Town traffic yet. But it was an amazing experience. We did all of that, and it was just like, I don't even know why these guys would, would, would take me for this, but they know that I love coffee. I talk about coffee often, and we had loads of fun, and it was just something to say, you know what, it's just great. Uh, we all sort of are after the same thing, and we all, all work well together, etc. So this is it. But then these oaks did something else which uh <laughs> in the moment in true franchise style you know what happened um i'm not going to get into that but let me show you oh so let me just do that so i mean if you think about something and now if you go and watch my video <clears throat> that i made about gifts and you go and and listen to what i said there i said i sent them a message afterwards with the video and I said, like, you guys knocked this all out the park. The only thing that they did that I say you should never do is put your logo on it. Um, but they did it in such style. And because we were celebrating our two businesses as well, I think it makes absolute sense to have the logos on you. And that's what it's about. There's a business relationship. There's a personal relationship. There's all of these things. So because this is a celebration of that, um, it made so much sense for them to do it. So I said, I'm going to change that video and say, when should you put your logo? When can you put your logo? I always said, if it's for marketing purposes, put your logo on it. If it's to say thank you, don't put your logo on it. But this is absolutely amazing. And, and <clears throat> what they've done here is like all the homework about me painting my little model. So there's Iron Man. It's not like you must look at the detail. Iron Man, there's Captain America, Batman. There's the logo for the business. Uh, the paint here in the bottom left, there's some more paint and an unpainted model. I mean... The, the 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 headphones um i do think they got the beard huh like it looks better in the picture but anyway so 
I mean, it's something like this, and this absolutely has the 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 impact because if, if you saw me in the moment, you would be able to see the impact, and this is going to have longevity because trust me, I never put up any awards I get or anything anywhere in anything that I do. This is going in the studio, so you'll be you'll see this somewhere in the future. <coughs> excuse, excuse me, <clears throat> and um, so that's what we're definitely going to do, and and I think something like that. It's very personal. Uh, but it also celebrates the relationship, you know. So, so from my point of view, if you want to say thank you and you want to give a gift, you know, how do you make sure that it hits the heart and then stay in the head or stay in the mind? So, how does it have impact and have longevity? Now, I want to give you some examples. So, this is say for you know, like many of you will know, <clears throat> those of you that follow me on Instagram, that I'm a foodie. Like I make loads of food. I make. I make amazing food. <laughs> it's the one thing that I, I, I do not um, compromise on at all. So, <clears throat> the I mean, it does take a lot of work to keep a body like like mine going, right? So, so we do it properly, and I really enjoy the whole process. It's the same thing with coffee. I enjoy the process of coffee. It's not about the. It's just not about drinking the coffee. It's about making the coffee. It's about understanding how all these things work. The same thing with food. And if you think about, if you want to give a gift, for example, and you could say, well, I'm going to give somebody a voucher to go and eat at this very expensive Lani restaurant. That's great. It'll have an impact. But I don't believe that it will have longevity. Yeah, maybe I'll tell somebody and a couple of friends and then, uh, then you move on with life. But if you think about something that will have longevity, it is probably sending somebody for a a. a training thing like uh, they have these where they, they teach you to cook or they teach you to do a certain kind of cooking i went for a sushi thing in the past and we went for uh, i can't remember what the other one was but but there's like these little things that you go and learn like this coffee thing you know it's something it's a skill that i learned that i will use forever and remember forever so this is important from from that point of view if you give somebody wine instead of giving them wine give them wine glasses probably because the wine glasses will last way beyond. I mean, once that bottle of wine has been been drank, it the bottle gets thrown away. So it's little things like that. So if somebody loves something, give them something that they can use over and over and over again uh, and then remember you that way. And if you do that, you don't need to put your logo on it. Uh, I remember way back uh, I was at a company and we had these award sort of functions for advisors and at the time, it was so fashionable. It was the latest thing. It was amazing. You won't believe this. Russell and Hobbs made a salt and pepper grinder that even had a little flashlight. Even though it was electronic. So you pushed it and, zzz, and it goes. It was amazing. And they bought everybody that as a gift, which is amazing. But what did they do? They put the company's logo on it. Now, I want to ask you, do you think that anybody's going to put this amazing salt and pepper grinder set on their Christmas table uh, with this big logo on it? I think not. So from my point, uh, when you think about this, when you want to say thank you, right, be clear on what are you celebrating, what are you saying thank you for, and then decide. And also, if you put a logo on it, I'll say put your logo and their logo on it because then it's a celebration of that relationship. But if it's something that they can use, I mean, imagine sitting there with your salt and pepper grinder, your friends pitching up, and they go like, whoa, where did you get this? I promise you they're going to say, I got it from, you know, we were at a, an awards dinner and this is what happened and we got this as a gift. But they can use it over and over again for many, many years, um, I guess, until something other uh, other comes along, something else comes along that is that is uh, more fashionable. But anyway, so, so those are my thoughts. So if I can quickly summarize this, you know, so think about marketing. Does your marketing have impact? Right, and, and impact can be short-lived or it can have longevity. So you want to do marketing that has longevity, something that makes a difference, but also at the same time illustrates what it is that you do and that you have the answer to problems, that you understand the problem and that there are solutions available from you and that people get a sense of who you are, your personality, etc. So that, that's important. The second one is your engagement. Make sure that you, your entire team and the technology that you use to enable all of this really fosters connection, that it helps you gain understanding and that you foster the empathy in order to get that longevity. And then when you have appreciation, uh, you know, when you say thank you, also be thoughtful around what it is that you do, whether it's doing an event, taking somebody somewhere to go and celebrate or give them a gift or do all of this together. 
uh, that is what you need to think about and uh, say, well, is this going to live in the heart and stay in the mind? And if the answer is yes, then do it. If the answer is no, then you've got to think some more. All righty. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, your time. Have a fantastic weekend. So, next week is the last show of the year. I'm going to do it from KZN, believe it or not. So, uh, today I'm in Cape Town, and uh, next week uh, on Friday I'll be in KZN. So, we will be. I hope KZN has got strong internet, uh, Mark. Uh, we need to talk. So, uh, but I look forward to that. And uh, next week we've got the Propulsion Pro. Uh, end of year get together in Pretoria uh, on Wednesday and then driving down to KZN to go and meet the guys there uh, at uh, somewhere there near Durban, I think. <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll be back next week, uh, same time, same place for the last time in uh, 2022. Be safe, be blessed and prosper. And remember to continue to raise the bar. I appreciate you. Love you. And uh, have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.